Hello you devil's advocates and anal pleasers. It's Saturday and another devil. John Wyndham has a very interesting mind, but I don't think he could have ever perceived this. Given the time and the original and adapted movies, it's impossible for it to be anything other than a schlocky B-movie. This is the 1962 version of Day of the Triffids. There's a meteor shower. When they hit the ground, they release spores, which grow and try to eat us. No, this isn't Little Shop of Horrors, and it wasn't produced by Roger Corman. This was made by us, and it's not a Hammer movie either. This does remind me of Little Shop, and of The Thing. A meteor has crashed into a lighthouse. A scientist who lives there believed it was dead, but it's regenerating. Damn it all, I'm not even a botanist. Is it a plant or an animal? Who knows? It doesn't seem to have any central nervous system. No circulation. Then how does it move? All plants move. And they don't usually pull themselves out of the ground and chase you. Now it wants life forms on Earth. It's getting cold in here, Fuchs, and I haven't slept in Wait a minute, days. Mac, wait a minute. It needs to be alone and in close proximity with the life form to be absorbed. The chameleon strikes in the dark. So is Blair cracking up or what? In the Creedy, there is still cellular activity in these burned remains. They're not dead yet. I last saw this on Halloween evening on BBC4 in 2008. It was an enjoyable romp, but it was also unintentionally funny. The big gripe I have here is that the print I'm about to watch is the same print I saw back then. This is begging for a restoration. It's 60 years old, and yet the 1981 BBC version was recently released on Blu-ray, fully restored. The poison sacks are exhausted. Must have been doing a hell of a lot of stinging. It's quite a campy man in a suit venture. It's also part of pop culture. And I really got hot when I saw Jeanette Scott fight a triffid that spits poison and kills. This was co directed by Freddie Francis, who had just shot The Innocents. Cinematographer Ted Moore would go on to shoot the first few James Bond movies. These are influential people, and including Howard Keel, actor, singer, dancer, an immensely popular American star of the 1950s. They never did return their plunder, the victor gets all the loot. They carried them home by thunder, to rotunda small but cute. And here, missing his trademark mustache. This is a fun movie, and it needs to be watched at least once.